My name is Nick Stoop. I'm a former D1 and D3 collegiate athlete. I played lacrosse and uh, I suffer from depression. Uh, probably the most depressing time that I can really remember was my junior year in college when I herniated two discs in my lower back and I was told that I couldn't play lacrosse or exercise or anything. And uh, those of you who know me know that it's basically my life. It's all I knew. Training, playing lacrosse. This, working out, that was my outlet. And when that was taken away from me, that was tough. Lacrosse was my other outlet. Both were taken. And definitely hit the lowest low I've ever experienced. And I did not handle it well at all. I still remember it to this day. I woke up, it's October 10th. We had an early morning practice and my alarm went off and I couldn't roll over to turn the alarm off. And I was like, what's going on? This is, this felt, felt something fell off, something felt weird. And I couldn't really move. And I remember just trying to like really roll over to get out of bed and this, incredibly sharp shooting pain went down my legs and I just remember thinking shit something's wrong I remember finally making it down to practice using my lacrosse stick as a prop to hold me up I was just like leaning on it we were doing man up man down plays I played defense so I was on man down and uh, I was playing top right, and I just remember my coach looking at me, he's like, Stoop, man, is everything all right? And I was like, Coach, no, not at all. He was like, why don't you take some reps off? And I just remember going to the sideline, laying down, and not getting up for the rest of practice. Uh, I had a few of my friends have to help me get me up and take me to the training room, and they could just tell the amount of pain that I was in. They're like, you need to go see someone now. And they referred me to a chiropractor. I went to go see him. And um, he helped me out a lot. Yeah, at first he thought it was maybe a strain or something pulling on uh, my spine, causing some impingement in my nerves, in my lower back. And that was what the irritation was. So we were trying to do different manipulation and therapy, uh, mobility work, and it wasn't getting better. And when I tell you I was in pain, this was the most pain I've ever experienced in my life. Out of a 10, easily a 12. And what made it worse was this pain was 24 hours a day, every single day. It was so bad that I had to, no lie, I had to like drink myself to sleep every night to just try to make it to the next day. I didn't want to remember being in pain. I didn't want to feel that pain. And I did not know how to handle it. I did not handle it the right way for sure. And like my friends knew I was going through through this and like I was obviously hurting and stuff, but they didn't really know like the mental aspect of what I was going through. Definitely did not know like the depression I was going through and dealing with. I also didn't really talk to anybody, didn't really reach out to anyone. I wanted to handle that myself. I wanted to deal with it myself. I didn't want to put that burden on other people like my family, my friends, my girlfriend at the time. I thought like I was strong enough to be able to handle it. I didn't realize until a lot later the, just the extent of the damage that I caused other people thinking I could handle it. I kept that in 
for my to myself for for a long time. Honestly, really. And I remember just like looking back on the situation and like how I treated some people. For those of you who I hurt during that time, I am truly sorry. I know I did not handle that situation well at all. And I'm hoping in sharing my story, my experience, I can help other people going through similar situations, going through tough times. Understand that it's okay to not be okay. But people do care. I, I, I remember uh, literally every night I had a handicap room, so we had a, a bench in our shower with a rail, and I would literally sit in that shower, line the rail up with beer, had the lights off, just listening to depressing music, and I would just cry while trying to drink myself to sleep so that I could wake up the next day and kind of do the same thing over again. Stupid. I could still hear the water from the shower hitting the empty beer cans on the floor. I can still hear that. How I, how I handle that situation and looking back at it, there are definitely things I wish I could have changed. I wish I could have turned to somebody and said, hey, I'm not doing it right. Just to talk to someone. You know, the stigma of trying to be, like, mentally tough, you know, and especially as like an athlete, you know. You feel like you can't show that weakness or that vulnerability. And you got to be tough for your persona, you know might change how people like see you or think of you and I, I can remember like going out every night it's one way I handle it was just trying to distract myself um, obviously by drinking but partying going out every night literally every night and just trying to escape the person I was, is I hate the mental, uh, the mental state that I was in, and the physical state. I just kind of like I didn't know if I'd ever not be in pain again. of myself, that cool, happy-go-lucky, fun party, athlete, jock, whatever, and there would be times, like, I'd be at parties, and I'd be talking to my friends, and not even know what I was saying, it's like I was watching myself through my own eyes on autopilot, not having any idea like what I was saying. I could see everything like I was there. And it kind of became like, like a different person, not in a bad way, just just like not true to me, definitely not true to who I was inside. And it's like I tried to make a different version of myself to kind of protect myself from me, from what I was feeling, from what I was going through, from the pain the physical, but the mental pain that I was in. If I could distract myself by being someone else, buy myself some time, I guess, trying to not be alone. And it's crazy to think now, like I still see parts of that person 
and me today. And it definitely inhibits me from being able to have like deeper, more intimate connections and relationships with other people. Um, from all the drinking I did, I still have problems. I lose feeling in both of my arms all the time. I'll wake up and I can't feel my hands. I go to turn off my alarm and I can't even feel holding my phone. I can't even feel touching my phone. It's so annoying. If I would have known what I know now, I mean, I can't go back and change the outcome. All I can do is share what I went through and try to provide the the knowledge and the resources that I wish I had at that time with everyone now so that you don't have to go through what I went through. I know I was fortunate at the time too. Uh, my, my coach, uh, honestly if it wasn't for him, I really don't know how I would have made it through that situation. Like, I'm sure he knew something was going on besides the, the obvious physical aspect of it because he still made me very much feel like a part of the team and involved and he made me help coach the defense my junior year and honestly if it wasn't for that I would not have been the player I was my senior year I would not be the coach that I am today it helped me out on a whole different level, gave me a whole new perspective of, from both like a coaching and playing perspective that's allowed me to take my game to the next level and my coaching. And the fact that he was like there for me and checking up on me. And when we won our conference championship and you know we got to, to travel for the first round and there are only so many slots for people you can like, dress and take and he talked to the captains of the team about giving one of those spots to me, someone who couldn't play, and they did. And that meant like the world to me. And that really helped me out so much at the time when I, I needed to kind of feel like loved and accepted like that. You know, like there's my family. You know, I had my family obviously back home, and that was my family in school. And even though I never really shared the stuff with either of them, knowing that both were there really unconditionally kind of kind of helped. You know, I, I didn't even realize honestly at the time how many other people were going through similar situations. And coaching now, coaching now. I've been very fortunate to be able to connect with athletes and mentor them and help them through situations that they're going through, whether it's injury, whether it's injury or depression, or depression brought about uh, by the injury that they've incurred. I know being there for them has helped them, and honestly, it's even helped me. Like, actually talking about and sharing my story has helped me. It's given me strength. It's kind of almost taken some of the power away from that inner depression, depression and the inner negative self-talk. And I've been sharing my story a little bit more lately, and it's definitely helped me a lot. It's almost its own form of therapy. And I know it's definitely helped them to hear that, you know, like, they're not the only ones going through this, and even though at the time, I know I felt like I was the only one going through this, and, you know, there, there are definitely times, like, I hated, hated being alive, I didn't want to be alive, uh, from the deep depression I was in, and just the unbearable physical pain that I could just never, like, get at, it seemed to get get rid of and I don't want anybody to feel like they're alone and people do matter you do matter you do matter 
whether you hear it or you don't, just know you do matter to someone. And like I still still struggle with depression to this day. And I find things to help give like me the like, kind of meaning and purpose and motivation to kind of push through. And the biggest thing that's given me motivation and courage to push through is honestly you being able to help other people. There's nothing I'm more passionate about than than helping and giving back. I love helping people. I love I love coaching. I love getting to help and work with athletes and provide the education and resources that I wish I had when I was in their, their shoes to help them not only achieve their goals but surpass them. I want to do that from the physical aspect, from the training and the nutrition and putting together the plans and programs and working with these athletes one-on-one -on -one and coaching as well as like the mental aspect, the mental health aspect. I want people to feel safe and comfortable sharing their stories. If not comfortable, at least just safe. To know that they're not alone and there are other people out there going through it. And, you know, honestly, like, my dog, I know when I'm feeling really low. She always puts a smile on my face. And there'll be times where like I'm not doing well and like I'll go for a drive and like I listen to music and cry and just kinda sometimes wish I wasn't alive, but I I always think like I would never leave her because she can't take care of herself. Like she relies on me and she gives me unconditional love and happiness and I can't just not show up can't come home one day. That's selfish. It's a being that relies 100% on me and gives me unconditional love. She honestly gives me a reason every single day to put on a smile. Be start my day off being happy. Whether or not you have a pet, you can find a reason to. 